<laughs> right, oh go, ooh. Okay, so hello everybody, welcome to Pro Tips Chaos Dwarves. This is a very tough match for the first game. I think Lizardmen is probably their worst matchup possible for um, Chaos Dwarves. Oh, uh, and it's it's Snail Backwards who was very rude and called me a looker nerd, I remember. Or maybe he didn't call me a looker nerd. He was very rude in chat, though. I do remember that. Um, he's not the nicest guy in the world. I think he also... Um, Thank you for the follow, wrong pipes. I think he also let the play to let the clock run down a lot. So I probably might have to remake this team. In fact, it might even be better just to concede to remake because this might be a bit crap to be honest with the YouTubes if it, if he's going to take four turns, four minute turns every time. But um, at least I mean people can um, people can ask questions in chat and uh, and I can talk to chat a bit during his outrageously long turns if they, if that's what he's if that's the way he's going to play it. Um, so I, I won't tilt off the face of the planet in taking a long time, but um, yeah, it's a very, it's a very, very tough matchup um, because the, you know they've got a Saurus for every for every blocker you've got, which is obviously makes it very tough. They just man's you, and then um, yeah, it's just tough, isn't it? Obviously, you want to get your Chaos Dwarves under his skinks, but if he's a good coach, he's not going to let it happen. And yeah, it's just absolutely dominating strength-wise. So it is a very, very tough matchup. I think the hardest for Chaos Dwarves. But even then, you you know, their armor seven. It's it's not like they die with every block. Um, wow, he's leaving himself. Oh, obviously, I've got to put these in case I get the quick snap. And. Um, Right, with the rain, I have to give up on carrying with a with a Saurus, a Saurusable Centaur. But I'd already kind of given up that at any time. Ah, Muldripster, thank you very much for the host. Stay chaftastic. <laughs> Top of the ladder at the moment, I think he is. Um, he's all Muldripster with Chaos Dwarves. I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> Not really, but um, he did. He did actually like the guide, which is good. And um, right, I think this guy is going to have to go on these with these two behind to um, kind of screen behind so that he can't get through. And obviously, just got to hope he doesn't roll the blitz. Can two D these guys, which is okay. It's like it's not it's not the best thing in the world, but this is a tough, 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 tough game. No, oh, very sunny. Okay, that's all right. That's much better weather than rain for me. So yeah, I think I think um, if I was going to uh, if I was going to um, if only I got the quick snap. If I was going to farm the new teams, the Kemri and the Chorf, this is how I do it by using it. Um, actually, misplayed here already. Already, I've misplayed here because what I should have done was probably. Blitz with the other one so that I could have kept him in the tackle zone. Um, I guess it hasn't mattered too much. Right. Two dice without blocks. Now, this is the thing with two rerolls. Do you really want to make these two dice blocks without block? Probably not. Not so much. Just go for the pickup and don't reroll it. That seems really bad, doesn't it? Hmm. Don't know what to do myself here. Yep, another go with the Chaos Dwarves. I mean, I haven't lost with Chaos Dwarves. So, um, so you know, I haven't done badly with them. It's just that I haven't had a good start with them. And I really want to get the pro... Though I, I want to get the pro tips done, just, you know, so that the pro tips is on, is on the tubes. The good thing is that I guess no, he can block these guys down, can't he? If I've got to make these blocks to get them down. Now he can't get the assist on him. And then the same here. But I guess put him on there. 
him over there. Oh, this is this is a problem. This this source is a problem though, isn't he? Uh, maybe bring him back to here. Is the screen going on? And no reroll for the pickup. Alright, good. Try to make sure he doesn't get based by a skink. Because, you know, it, things could happen. He can blitz him, pull guys through. I want to be able to go either way. So, um, and really don't want to get based. As, as, as unexciting as basing somebody is, people do like to do it. And it's better to not be based if you can help it. It's crazy how many games you've made Muldrips. How many games you've played Muldrips to. Crazy. So yeah, so in this game, I'm mostly just going to be using my Bull Centaurs as overpriced Saurus. So I can at least fight. He's got seven guys that can fight. If I fight with my Bull Centaurs, I've got eight guys that can fight. And while it's not ideal, um, it's going to be have to... <laughs> no, no, to be fair, Orylensis is good, isn't it? it VIP Orylensis, um, you know, he, he looked at he looked at the guide, and then he, the first time he made it, he made it with three rerolls and five, five chaos dwarves, and um, then he watched my guide and remade with two rerolls and six chaos dwarves, and then he's nine one zero. Based on the ball carry, it's just it's just not always good, Archvillani, Archvillani. Um, some people like to just base the ball because it's something to do. It's it's not necessarily bad, but it's also not necessarily good. And some people are just like, I must base the ball, I must base the ball, it's everything I have to do in the world. And I think that is bad play. Um, so yeah, there you go. As VIP Adonticalis says, um, it's not outright bad, but yeah, some people... You've got to you've got to do it properly. Oh, there you go. He gets he gets to make the block. You you know like it's stupid, isn't it? I I base him to a um, to two dice a skink, and on the return block he casts my guy, and and that is that is what happens in Blood Bowl. <laughs> Unbelievable. And this is why, you know, going for the skinks. Oh, just kill the skinks. Pe people say, a lot of people like to say, just kill the skinks. Well, guess what? You can't just kill the skinks. If it was that easy, it would be easy, wouldn't it? But it's not. This is a bit of a threat, isn't it? Is Crocs here. I'd like to blitz this skink, block him, block him. Block him. Maybe I could stand up, blitz him, block him. And then get covered around here. I think this is the way to to do it. Right. So how, well, how far can this guy get? One short of where he'd like to be to make the screen. But the the blocker can make the screen um, potentially. But it's I mean it's already ridiculously rough. <laughs> losing a losing a chalk blocker did not happen. Did not happen. Did not help. But there you go. Right. He's got to just run over here. Right. I've got to make the one dice block because there's not a lot else you can do, is there? He does have block though, which is good. It is good to have block. He can base him and complete the screen to keep him safe. So screen is just two players with two squares between them. And um, so that's happening, which is okay. I can 2D him and 2D him. I guess in case we're both down, I'd rather do this one first. Oh, I've got the power. Nothing. And this one's just a two. Can't make it a three, unfortunately. So I guess he, I do let him sidestep out of tackle, which isn't great. But um, on the other hand, so what? <laughs> He's going to blitz, isn't he? The, the Crocs of is going to blitz and base the ball. So I'm going to just dodge. <laughs> and I mean, if it had failed, so what? He's getting two dice by him anyway. 
So taking the 50% dodge obviously doesn't seem like a great strategy. But the last thing you want is a Croxagore on the ball. Um, but then also, you don't get blocked by a Croxagore either, but there you go. It is what it is. You can't really... You can't really do a lot in this. This matchup is horrendous. If if I if I really wanted to, to just win all my games, I would totally have made a lizard man team and crush the Kemri that can't pick up the ball and the the chaos dwarves that you strength massively. But um, yeah, yep, yeah, that's very true. VIP, and, and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Morgan's TV. <laughs> I have block you, don't. Yeah. Uh, that was a proper canal moment, but um, you know that's the thing. At, at least Chaos Dwarfs can make those one dices semi reliably due to having block on everybody. So at least now it looks like he's going to base with his Saurus potentially. No. He's going to base with a Skink. See, I knew I knew he was one of those guys who just has to base every turn, and uh, no, you know, no matter what the cost, he's just going to base. He's going to base the ball carrier every turn. So I think it was worth basing the Croxagore there. Yeah, it is a two plus block. You got to make. You can't be afraid of making them against lizard men. No, this this is slightly more problematic. The um, the Liz, the the Saurus basing. It's just it's just a hor what a horrible thing for when I decided to do the pro tips. <laughs> typical, isn't it? It's absolutely typical. Decide to do a pro tips game, get drawn against lizard men, and and what do you do? Like, what do you do here? It's just horrible, isn't it? It's absolutely, completely horrible. There's nothing I can... He didn't even block. I could serve him if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, GFI, GFI. No. I just can't do it. I've got, but then, I, if I dodge, where do I even go? It's just, it's just horrific. It's like, I might as well... I might as well just concede on turn 1 like Lupe. Because... There's pretty much nothing I can do. Blitz him and then block him. Great. What does that achieve? One dice him. So that he can two dice him. It's like... It's completely horrific. Completely, absolutely pwned right from the start. Nothing I can do. Absolutely nothing. This is a very real situation. How do you beat them? I just don't... Against a competent opponent, it's very, very difficult. This is one situation, especially being a Chaos Dwarf blocker, Chaos Dwarf blocker down instantly. That's made it very difficult. I'm thinking of doing this one dice block here, as bad as it is. It's essentially a naked 3+, plus, isn't it? And it doesn't even achieve a lot after I do it. So, then go for the Blitz with him. So I have to stand, do safe moves first. Oh, nearly got caught out by the camera moving. Thanks, Cyanide. That has to be fixed. That's that's the worst thing in the game. I have to make a one dice. Need a three plus. So it was like dodging with a ball carrier. The only thing is, at least I haven't lost the game by failing it. But um, it's game over. Pretty much. There you go. Absolutely fucked. When you lose, when you lose a Chaos Dwarf blocker on turn one, what are you gonna do? He did the right thing. Yeah, lizard men are a are a hard counter to Chaos Dwarves. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's definitely what I would use to fight against the Chaos Dwarves at this point in time. I mean, be, be, especially being a blocker down. If I've got the extra blocker, it does make a big difference. Huge difference. Huge. It's big. It's huge. Um, 
you know, but unfortunately, both centaurs have little hands, so they can't they can't knock down the skinks. Him having a bull centaur being tied up by a skink is absolutely perfect for him. And there's just there's just nothing I can do. Yeah, yeah. If I killed Saurus, yeah, I guess, I guess if I randomly killed Saurus with uphill blocks or with with the bull centaur blocks before, but this is dream scenario for him. Skinks on skinks on bulls. Um, blockers either dead or tied up. That's basically nothing. Nothing that can be done. I have to go back to Brett. He chose to to defend, which is a good idea for him, really. If he wants to win, it means he defends with all eleven players. Um, oh, that was. Oh, it wasn't that bad because he still had somebody already basing him. All right, so I've got just got to go for the three plus dodge into the two dice without tackle. Um, probably shouldn't have stood him up, but I'm just trying to do the safe moves first because why not? And yeah, it's just it's just crap, isn't it? It's just really crap. Can't re-roll this now with one re-roll there. And have to re-roll this, because it's my only shot at not losing. Alright, did it. And have to take the ball down. Alright. He's out of re-roll on turn three. Ah, that's good. Really horrible. Yeah, claw pom can shred them, but even at, even at high team value, if your claw pom doesn't shred them, you're in you're in for a bad a bad time because they outstrength you by so much to the point where it's just not even funny. I guess I mispositioned this ball center. I should have gone here, as it was. I let him block that guy free. That was that was poor by me. Yeah, exactly, Muldrip. So, yeah, there was no way I was using a reroll. Yeah, there was no way I was allowed to use a reroll there. Well, Slip and Jimmy troll all. Um, a lot has got to be said for coaching prowess. If your opponent has Lizardmen but is a noob, he's still going to lose. Um, and he didn't play against any Lizardmen, so there you go. But, you know, that that's the thing. Co coaching ability means, or just in a match as well because obviously I've had bad matches and stuff where I've played crap um, but yeah if, if it's an if it's a noob with um, lizard men and plus he got that Kaz you know if he hadn't got that Kaz it's a lot different but um, yeah that, that's that's a big thing I think is just you know if if a bad coach has the lizard men it's not so hard to win but if a good coach has them, like clearly Lyons is somewhat decent. He's got the matchups that he wanted, and um, he's he's at least play, hasn't played bad. Um, so it just makes it, it just makes it tough, doesn't it? Right. So I can two D him, which will get him one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> right. That doesn't really work, does it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I'm gonna have to I'd have to One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I still can't make the blitz. Even if I one dice get the pow there. So I'm going to have to make this dodge. Did he stand up? Yep. Yeah. There's no way to dodge too. One, two. This guy being stunned, absolutely crucial. One, two, three, four. Oh, God. He might have to just blitz and then base the ball. Blitz through here. That might be the best play. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So I think the best play is... I mean, I don't need to make this block, but I just want him. Let's go for the blitz from him. 
Oh, he's just stood up, for fuck's sake. He just stood up this turn. Oh, I'm an idiot. Right. If he blitzes him... One, two, three, four, five. Moved him in the wrong place. Oh no, I stood up. He couldn't go anywhere else. I've just got to blitz him. There's nothing else I can do. Christ. <laughs> And then he's got to, he's got to take the hit from this Saurus. He's got to try and knock him. I guess he's just got to stand up. Now I've just got to hope he scores next turn. Basically, <laughs> it's looking pretty fucking grim. Pretty grim. Exciting pushes, yeah. Yeah, it's just grim, isn't it? I just gotta hope he somehow. Um... But I mean, he's not. He, he can one in nine, though. If he blitzes here and one in nines, then I can 2D him and get through. So, there's possibilities if he one in nines. The fact he's out of reroll, rerolls is good. So I just got. I just got to hope he, he he gets a turn. He turns over here. Mm, okay. So now now when he scores next turn, I've got I've got to do something to stop him scoring next turn because I'm probably not going to be able to score in two turns with one reroll. <laughs> yeah. I mean the fact the fact the fact that he made that removal was huge, absolutely huge. And I shouldn't have given up that block. I just gave up the block so that I could two dice a skink. And obviously I did nothing with the skink. He, he, he got KO'd making a dodge. So at least it's equal men on the pitch. At the moment. But, um, yeah. He definitely did the right thing by kicking first. I think defensively Lizardmen are ridiculously hard to deal with at low TV. Offense, at least they've got to carry with a skink and that. That, they've got to protect the ball, but when they don't even need to think about protecting the ball, when, they, when they're when they just free to apply pressure with seven strength four plus guys, pretty hard to deal with them. But he's in a bit of a pickle here, isn't he? With these two bull centers being able to block the other one free. He can, go, he can chance the minus 2D if he has to. I guess he's just going to get 2D down, though. But then yeah, you got one in nine can happen, can't it? He might just score here, actually. He might just score, and if he scores and three turns to score, there's a chance of being 1-1 one, one and then turning him over and winning. But it's it's not good, obviously. Obviously not a good chance. Yeah, he just scores. Makes sense, it makes sense to just score there. I think I would have just scored. Because he just gets banged on if he won in nines. I right, really need his skin to stay out. I'll be lovely. Good. Good, so got a man advantage. And got um, three turns to score with a reroll. Isn't so bad. Might have to be a handoff to a, a bull or a hobgoblin, though. And being 1 1 at half time, albeit after, after receiving, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah, I think he absolutely did the correct. Made the correct decision, decision there. And now I think I have to take the bull centaurs out of the fight, and have to um, have to you know get them as canoring threats. I don't want to carry with one unless I get touchback though. Obviously, touchback is going straight to the bull. Um, what with them being strength four. Maybe one could be on the line, block him down, go for the blitz there, but it's it's just all about the Saurus, you know, you've got to control control the field by hitting Saurus. I was a bit stupid giving up that block just to hit a skink, but the fact he gave me the skink made me a little bit greedy, I guess. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, mad come to US. This is gonna. I mean, this is really hard now. Obviously, one nil down on your own drive against the best team in the game. Probably, probably is the best team in the game at low TV. Anyway, right, I've got to go this side, haven't I? It seems he bizarrely imbalanced his offense, defense even. Have to blitz down this side now. If I just go three ahead, he can't actually free up anybody. Whereas if I did any other kind of, like say this guy was out here, he could block him, block him, and free up the, the Croxagor, whereas now he just can't free him up, can he? He'd have to use a blitz to free him. down here with block and hope something good happens I guess he's got to go over there in case the ball goes that side Woody's undead in the zone oh, every time every time the imbalanced offense is meted with a perfect defense Every time you get crushed by perfect defense, you can bet your house that your opponent will get perfect defense. That's blood ball for you. Lizzie's worst 1000 TV matchup, probably Zons and Woodies and Undead. Yeah, probably, yeah. And, yeah. Zons, Undead, Woodies are just the best. At t and Zons, Lizards, Undead, and Woodies are just the best, yeah. They're just the worst. Right. Nah, he couldn't. He couldn't block one free, Fan Fox. He, yeah, he could block a Saurus free, but he couldn't block his Crocs free. Um. Yeah. Right. I mean, the good thing is that actually this might have done him more harm than good. To be honest, because ultimately he gets there. It's three GFIs for that Hobgoblin to score by himself. Um. And I can still swing around and do stuff, can't I? I'm tempted to GFI to blitz him now. But I think maybe getting him down is better, isn't it? Now let's assume that the ball's going to be here. Everyone else is in kind of a fine place, really. I guess this guy could be in there to make that a 2D and then get him back. I don't really want to make extra GFIs with him. He could, ah, he could GFI to um, base him. So one GFI here is okay. Right. And then he can go in there to make this a 2D. Get more players on the ground. Would be nice. Good. Luckily the unskilled Saurus. So now he can come back here, can't he, to make it a um, an actual cage. Pick up, unbelievable. Um, I do have to make three GFI, so I guess I can just make the first one now and get into this nice, this nice cage here. Um, he can come up there to screen off this, and I do want to stop his Saurus moving around, don't I? Like that. All right, that's good. I think that was about as good as I could have done. Oh yeah, is that the blue screen of death on um, on PlayStations? Yeah, they said it was. I saw something about it, but I didn't really understand it. What's he gonna do?
I might just go for the 75% handoff to a to a bull. Wouldn't be the worst thing ever. Yeah, he's definitely trying to block to free up a Saurus here, isn't he? Oh, he's freeing the crocs. He's freeing the crocs. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> I like freeing the crocs just because of his tail makes um, dodging impossible. Ah, but he got mighty blow on a hobgoblin, which is which is fair enough, isn't it? So interesting. I could blitz, could blitz this guy, and then that frees up this bull, doesn't it? He can block him, so make some kind of screen down here. He can block him and get him away as well. So I think this just seems like the best thing to do. Um, also, I could blitz him, and then GFI to base the Saurus. Seems like a very nice play to do. Oh shit, now it'd be two GFIs. Fuck. Well now that's that's that idea down the pan. GFI to um make this a 2D, but then the 1D is a 2 plus anyway, so there's no need to make extra rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six. The ball can get to there. This is pretty rough. Very, 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 very rough. I, I don't want to make two GFIs to base him. With, with, with only one reroll. And with him still having to make two GFIs to score himself. The fact he's going to have to make those GFIs means that he could go one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI if he had to. Assuming he blocks him and doesn't follow, I want a player here and a player here, and a ball there. So you can make a GF fighter there. Alright, good. 1D. Bumsfallera, got him. Got the pal, if you can believe that. I guess might as well follow up because now he makes a screen with the other chaff, doesn't he? He's got tackle on that one. So this is this is a little bit worrying. Um, this guy. I guess I can make the dodge and the GFI to mark him. <laughs> because if it works, it works. All right, that was pretty lucky. Ah, oh, thank you for the cup of tea. <laughs> So I mean that was pretty lucky, but obviously I had to make that dodge in GFI just to, just for the chance of it working, because this guy's so much further away, isn't he, than the other one? Pretty pretty lucky. It's going to make quite a lot of rolls to do that one. That was that was a nice lucky move, but you know you need a bit of breaks, don't you? And you've got to try it as well. Like some people wouldn't have tried it. Like in my game against Jellyel yesterday, both of us should have made um, bull sent or dodges that we didn't make. Um, I spotted the one that he should have made and didn't make. And then despite the fact that I observed that, I still I still did not um did not do one myself one time. Blue screen farm as well, that's ridiculous. Good screen, fresh cup of tea and ball in hand. It does look, it does look, it does look all right under his MF. The only thing is, it was, um, it is my, it is my, um, it was my reception. So even if this goes well, I'm still one one 
with him receiving. But if this guy stays out, then I'm 1-1 one, one then up with him receiving, but it's still not great. He's just making blocks. One in nines. Fails. Made the GFIs with him, I think. One, two, three, four, four. No, I still need to make a GFI to score. So I don't really want to fail anything. I don't want that, which means I don't make this three dice blitz. I'd love to make a three dice blitz on the skink, but I don't even want to make a two dice block without block at this point, to be honest, right now. Um... The only bad thing is if I score, you'll get two chances to get him back, so you'll probably get him back. But yeah, I think I don't even make two dice blocks without block. There's a one in 36 chance. Uh, there was somebody in um, there was somebody in, in the league that I was in in OFL. Um, I can't remember his name right now. He was quite a good coach. What was his name? can't remember his name. Anyway, you could argue it was naming and shaming. And he was in a game where he made like something like, you know, he made this block and he double scored. Oh. And then, then he rolled a one on the GFI. And I was like, that was your fault. You know, that was just your fault. You knew you had to make a GFI or two to score. And you made a two dice block without blocks. You can't even complain about losing that game. And that's what I said to him. And he didn't like it. But it's true. So I'm, I'm not going to make this because of the fact that I have to make this GFI. There you go. Yeah. Good chaff. Well, he's not really a chaff, is he? He's Hobgoblin. The Hobgoblins are amazing. Amazing animations. Amazing models. Amazing sounds. The Hobgoblins are just, are just fucking quality. No doubt about it. No. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Is that for the the, the raffle? Yeah. Right, so we've got zero, zero, zero. This is obviously going to suck if he removes the Chaos Dwarf here. It's also going to suck if he one turns. Um, obviously, I could set up in a way to kind of stop the one turn, but then I don't want to give up unnecessary blocks. If he one turns, he one turns. It's fair enough, isn't it? Not a lot you can do about it. I could put a help goblin or a or a bull on the line so that he'd um he would have to dodge through tackle at least once. But um I don't even want to do that to be honest. Just I just hope he doesn't get the one turn. He hasn't got a reroll, so he'd have to get some luck to score the one turn. Yeah, only hat wearing players deserve a touchdown. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> she will become the first man in Germany to marry a hog. Hot life. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's got he's got this he's got the uh, movement eight sidestep, so he's actually got a really good shot of the one turn. Um But the thing is I just I just didn't wanna I didn't want to expose Bull Sentinels to being blocked. I really do want to put a ball centre on the line. And if I put a whole goblin on the line, then there's a really good chance of being down men for the, for the second half. No, I did not jump toast. VIP jump toast. Um, I do live in Germany, DP Alpha Frog, yeah. <laughs> wow, that, that's pretty disgusting, Eric Behimer. But yeah, he's, do, he's doing the right thing going for it, obviously. He's definitely, he's, well, maybe he hasn't set up great for it, but he's he's definitely not bad. He's a step above. Oh, and he got the re-roll re for it as well. What a bastard. He's definitely a step above the usual call standard. I think that's clear. He's got, he should go for the handoff now, I think. Um, to be honest. Just because. Oh wow! And he got the reroll. Oh, and still failed. Ah, good, good. I guess no. He gets the push to there is when he goes for the handoff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So he, he should have got that first push, then gone for the handoff. Because if he'd waited too long, like if he if he freed up the tackle zone, he'd have to do a pass. So yeah, he did he did exactly the right play there. 
I can't get enough of that schnitzel. That's true jam toast. Um, but yeah, it's because it's because that's where my girlfriend lives, and uh, so I, yeah, I moved moved there. There you go. Wow. So I, I got pretty lucky there that he he had six dice needing a push and didn't get one. Pretty lucky to avoid the one turn. Especially, but then he was lucky to get the reroll for the attempt. Schnitzel. Schnitzel's amazing. Right, so... It's not the worst thing. Wow, if he goes for a foul here, he's, he's a terrible player. <laughs> oh, wow. He's trying to lose the game. Actively trying to lose the game. Sure, he's got an almost certain armor break. Sure. But he's fouling a he's fouling a thick skull player, you know. And he, chances are there he's much more like like the chance of him going down to ten players is just stupid. Thank you very much for the follow. Twenty three Hellboy. That was just that was just a terrible terrible foul. He should have absolutely been sent off just for being bad. <laughs> that's what that's what should have happened. Sent off for being bad. Um, no, unfortunately, I've got to put my. Um, I think I've got to screen my uh, my bulls completely here. And obviously, you can just you can bog down my um, blockers. This is the thing; you can just base the blockers to make sure that I haven't got any tackle to bring down the skinks, which is a shame. But nothing I can really do about it. But now the bulls are 100% screened, even if he knocks down him. If he knocks down him, they can base one. But he can't base both. So I really need the bulls to run around and do things and win the game for me now. Um, I guess this guy could go back. But I like dissuading and blitzing the middle guy. Um, there you go. <laughs> Ninety-one percent. He should have got a push. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess that's fair enough, Muldripster. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair enough. Well, no, not not just to tilt them, but you think that you can't win unless you get a removal there. So you you roll the dice to try and yeah. So okay. So yeah. Seeing as this is pro tips, yeah, I should have I should have explained. Yeah. To be fair, that is the kind of foul you make when you're up against a way better, and that's the only thing to justify the risk. That that's absolutely true. By by Muldripster. If you think the only way you can win is by being up players, then you make that kind of foul and hope that you randomly get a Kaz and, you know, and just hope against hope. And, you know, it's the sort of thing that, you know, um, yeah. Yes, that's very true, Jellyel. The perfect defence actually made it easier. He misplayed on the, on the perfect defence. Absolutely, in my opinion. He absolutely misplayed on the perfect defense. I, I, I believe so. Because he forgot that bull centaurs can be movement nine. And he, he just he just slammed his source on the line, which didn't really do a lot. I wasn't planning to make a lot of LOS blocks anyway. If I'd made a heavy commitment to the LOS, then basing everyone would have been a good idea. The reason is, while it means that they get tied up by Saurus, which is exactly what he wants, Arch Filiani, he does, he does what he wants every single strong player of his on a Chaos Dwarf and mine. So then his skinks are free to do stuff. But if I put Hobgoblins on the line, then chances are he knocks them all down and you know makes a KO or a Kaz or whatever. And I just really don't want to be men down. I'd rather have a Hobgoblin on the pitch than not on the pitch at the end of the day. But, you know, Armour 9 still breaks, as, as was proven in the first half. So, it's not great. Yeah, Rock Throne, it didn't fuck me, unbelievable. It did just stun him, though. It could have KO'd him, couldn't it? That would have been all right. Yeah, it was an interesting kick, wasn't it? If he fails this kick, it means he has to re-roll the, the pick up, probably. And if it goes in the crowd, it could be an amazing, an amazing thing. Yeah, see, he still got broken. So... 
But the other one it might have been saved by being armor 9. And this guy might be saved by being armor 9. Yeah, exactly, Eric behind me. It was a very it was a very low percentage bad play by him. But um There you go, well. <laughs> Um, so yeah, six. So you'd have been all right if he was a hobgoblin still. But I don't know. I just think I'd rather my. You know, and plus if these three players were hobgoblins, see, he's got to re-roll it now. I think. Oh, he got lucky. He got lucky. But I mean, that could have easily gone in the crowd, thrown back in up here, and he just loses. Well, yeah, he loses the game. He loses the game if that goes in the crowd and gets thrown back this way. That that's almost. He almost loses the game there. So I think he was ballsy to not re-roll it. But on the other hand, he's only got two re-rolls. You really don't use a re-roll with Lizardmen picking up the ball. So, um, right. What do I need to do then? Like, at some point, I want to free up my Chaos Dwarves. But then even then, my Chaos Dwarves are too slow. So I think I just feed my Chaos Dwarves to his team at this point. Let him tee off on Chaos Dwarves. Nothing more I can do. And try to get some pressure on with the other players. It's grim though. It's really grim. I think I sacrifice a bull centaur as well to the fight. GFI there, so this guy can run forward at the end there. Wow, nearly got done by the moving camera there. So yeah, these guys just get sacrificed. Much like the two pilots on the road to WrestleMania, they've already made the sacrifice. Have him back as a bit of a safety. And bits with the guy furthest away so that this guy can make a breakthrough. Bit of a breakthrough. Ah, oh, double skull it. And I guess I can't afford to reroll that double skull, so. <sighs> Shard of. Yeah. Yes, that that is the thing as well. Yeah, VIP jam toast. At this point, I'm just hoping he rolls one in nines. So, yeah, basing him with armor nine and block is better than basing him with armor seven without block. Basically, yeah. There's a chance if if he if he makes all these blocks, there's a chance he won in nines, one or two of them. <laughs> he can free a Saurus here, can't he? Yeah, I mean this this is good for pro tips, Lizardman. He's he certainly got uh, um, a decent knowledge of Lizardman. You know, like freeing up Saurus with blocks and stuff, which new players don't do. He's definitely not new. He's getting good matchup for his Saurus and he's he's blocking them free when he can. No, I think it would have been out of rather stayed where he was there. I don't know if he's in the stream or not. <laughs> Man holes. A dwarf bull. Oh, he got the pick up. So I guess that we both showed some good reroll management there, him not rerolling that pickup, though I think I would have been scared of the scattering the crowd. But on the on the other hand, the other the yesterday I didn't reroll one that was near there. Yeah. Yeah, so Yeah, good point Eric behind me, yeah. You don't have to reroll things that end your turn. So again, I've just gotta just gotta sacrifice these guys. He can potentially surf this. The, so I think the reason that he moved this Saurus here is so he can potentially surf this Hobgoblin. Um, because he would just simply he would simply move. What would he do? How would he do it? He would block him down, push him to there, and then surf with either this Saurus or with a Skink. It's not hard to surf this Hobgoblin. I'll stand him up even though he's got block. And he can 
stand up. He can free him up, so he might do a one. Minus 2D there. Doubt it, though. Right. So now, I guess, now that this guy's further away, he does the blitz on this guy. Because I really do want to put some pressure on him. Got the knockdown. Unbelievable, Jeff. And a GFI to be free. While this guy. I don't like making GFIs with bulls. But. I could one nice block, couldn't I? That wouldn't be so bad. Then he could one dice block as well. But on the other hand, if I go over here, then it makes it a little bit tricky for him. But not as tricky as being down. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go there. Oof. Sure feet. Right, let's go make this one dice. Oh, yes. So now the push would base my um, ball, and I don't want that. Ah, but I guess you can push him with him and free him up. Also, because I have to make his one dicer as well. Ho oh, ho ho! Brutal. Now, surfing him looks a lot harder, doesn't it? You'd have to block him down, block him down, and then move him. He still could surf the hobgoblin. What can this guy do if he doesn't surf him? Hmm. I could dodge and go over there. That doesn't seem very good though. I don't want to dodge. I think I just leave him leave him down, unfortunately. Why are people talking about nipples? <laughs> yeah, one dice is do still have a 50% chance for a knockdrift. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Mordrifter. Exactly. There's a, there's a substantial payoff. And if you don't make them, you're just going to get two dice by... by uh, you're just going to get two dice by a uh, lizard man. That's the thing. By a Saurus. The Saurus is just going to two dice you if you don't do it. So, I like that this bull's free. This gives us a shot of something, something good occurring, potentially. Could do uphills for days here. Gotta be, gotta be wary of the, uh, of the breakaway and score though. That's the thing, isn't it? He can't afford to activate this, this Crocs now. So yeah, so, that's, so he blitzes with him. That's, so maybe I should have stood him up, actually. Maybe I should have stood him up. So I guess now he, now he can activate the crocs. If he wants. Right. Well, yeah, if there's a reason. You don't, you don't want to roll the skull and get banged on, do you? Right. So... If I put... If I had two players here, I could block him, power him to then move him out. And then... He could blitz. So he'd have to block him. Down. And I would have to get two players over here. Which is not easy. It's possible, though. He could block him down. With this guy's... So he could block him on two. He could stand up. He could block him down. He could run around to here. He could run to three, four, GFI to here. Then he blocks him on one dice. Maybe two with him. Gets the power into there. Then he goes and hits the ball. That, that can happen. It's not the craziest thing in the world. It does leave me quite exposed if it all fails, though. Maybe I just make this a one dice thing, I just need the push. Just 
go do this part first. Because it's the least. It's the s safest part, isn't it, there? Oh, wow. The car's pretty lucky. Right, so he can come in here. Ah, I need someone to cancel this assist. So this does have to be a one die, so... All right. Got him. All right. So this guy goes here to cancel this assist. The two come in here, and then this is a one dicer to power him and clear. It's pretty dodgy, isn't it? Do I go for it? And cheer five from him. One dice. If it's a power, it's glorious. If it's a push, it's not. I think I have to do it. Just because I've seen this tremendous chain push, chain push play that if it works will be glorious. I have to go for it. Come on, get the pow. Big pow. Oh my god, I'm so good. So good at Blood Bowl, guys. Pro tip. Be awesome at Blood Bowl. Look at that. Two dice with tackle on the ball. Roll pushes. <laughs> Alright, get a both down. And he catches it. Fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, man. That was a nice play, wasn't it? That was a nice play, that chain in, into the one dash. One dash into the chain. Use my re-roll. Maybe I shouldn't have re-rolled it. Maybe I should have just pushed him. Man. I think I have to make this dodge now. Well, attempt this dodge. Masterful bait by your opponent. I think I have to just get a player back. Because it's too easy for him to make a breakaway. Alright, good. <laughs> Five plus catch. Unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> if I'd made the if I'd made the push play though, if I'd just taken the push, then he's based by two tacklers. He can only block one away. I guess he could have blitzed with this one. It really was a sick play, thank you. <laughs> wow. I'm sad it didn't work out. Oh, he's making a bit of a... Oh, one in nine. Oh, man. Imagine the one in 81. I would love that. Mm. I might be able to get two dice on him next turn anyway, somehow. Yeah, he is under much pressure. Yeah, that that Kaz, that Kaz really helped a lot, didn't it? To be honest. Huge Kaz, huge. It's big, it's huge. Yeah, and I guess I got lucky that he rolled. He used a re-roll then. Yeah, there's not many places for him to go, is there? Just running back. Is the safest play for him, but then of course him running back, at least at least gets the ball near his end zone for me, which is good. I think he forgot about this kink. <laughs> I think he forgot about him. Unfortunately, running back reminded him of him. <laughs> Bonehead. So he'd done a really good job. I mean, this was a good pro tip, Lizard Men. He did a really good job of not activating the Crocs, where a 1 would have been very detrimental. And then when he finally does activate him, he rolls the 1. <laughs> Absolutely standard. It's 
It's funny because if he if he dodges this skink, it makes this a two D. But even with a one D, I can chain him out. So I'd like to surf this guy actually. Um, you know, as much as I as much as I'd love to just blitz this guy and base the ball. <laughs> The good old basing the ball strategy. Um, it's really risky to stand him up now, though, isn't it? To one D to get a push to get the surf. It's pretty pretty dodgy. One Ding him to free up these guys. I want to. I want the skinks in tackle zones of block players, don't I? Yeah, block block tackle players. One dicing guys. He could come around and make this a two dice. Then he could make this a two dice. Then I could blitz somewhere. He could blitz a skink, potentially. He could just base a source, would be alright at this point. Kind of. I just need somebody active to go and hunt down the skink wherever he goes. This is the problem, isn't it? Maybe I shouldn't have moved him forward there. I think it's probably worth moving him up there and making this a 2D. Hmm. Shit. <laughs> How this can become a two die split block. I'm, I've got to play a little bit safe, haven't I, unfortunately. And do I free up my bull? Yeah, I have to, because... Again, I have to play a little bit safe, don't I? I could just blitz this skink, though. And then put bulls up there. Two GFIs base the ball with him. All right, I'm all in. I'm all into playing like a madman here. <laughs> right. Two GFIs, no re-rolls. Just try to base him with tackle. Fuck. Yeah, but you see. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it was worth playing like a madman there, because if I base the ball with tackle, that's huge. There's, there's no way you can block him off. Um... And he's, res he's resorting to a 1 in 3. He'd have to use his last reroll on it. Um, I think trying to base him with tackle was okay. Basing him with a bull I didn't think was worth it, which is why I didn't. So, you know, that's why I think some people who base, base inappropriately. Somewhat. He might just go for the handoff play here, mightn't he? This is, this is why I nearly blitzed this guy. Because if he scores, he just wins, doesn't he? Looks like he just wins. Yeah, maybe I should have made that blitz rather than this play. Rather than this blitz and this. I could have just based these guys and blitzed him. That would have probably been better, to be honest. But yeah, I was playing for the win. I was playing for the win, that's the thing. You tiny T, Jana. Maybe I shouldn't have played for the win. Maybe I should have just played for for the draw there. Still, 75% dodge here is, is not so bad. I mean, I've really out position now with both bulls up there. Nobody back. It's looking pretty horrible. Yeah, I, I guess I, I guess I misplayed terribly there. Um, no, I, I did remember that the Crocs was boneheaded, but I wanted the the I wanted the blockers where they were. Right. So he can block him. Minus two dice from him is probably better than... Oh, he can't dodge now anyway. All right, then. All right, so it's the minus 2D on the Crocs. 
is the play. <laughs> grim. Grim stuff. You just have to block him. Push is no good, though, is it? On the this is the the bad thing. The minus two D on the Crocs. The push only gets in there, and it's still a dodge. One, two, three. It's still a dodge through. Oh God, this is horrible. If he blocks him, there's there's just no way. So I've got to block here. I guess I'd like to move him round there. It does seem excessive making two GFIs and you don't have to, though, doesn't it? Right. Got to go for this, minus 2D. Have to re-roll it as well. Yeah, so got the push. But realistically, that's not enough, is it? Because if I go this way, I can only base. And he's got a reroll. So I have to make the 5 plus dodge into the two GFIs. No other play. No other play. I just lose otherwise. I mean, maybe I could have. Maybe I could have blitzed him and put pressure on. But I think. I think I'd lost, to be honest. I think I lost. I think I lost with that stupid, that stupid play, really, of trying to base the ball. <laughs> I criticised it, and I didn't. I didn't want to commit a reroll to it, and it was a bit. It was a bit larry, wasn't it? Getting three guys up there when he's movement eight. I should have just played safe, blitzed his guy who was standing up, and and you know played for the draw more. Probably should have played for the draw. I mean, playing for the draw. There's no. It was the fact it was game one. Oh wow! Look at that. And I just wasted my reroll, and I and I again I did the kind of mad go for the win play, and I've I've screwed myself again because anything can happen, can't it? With um, in Blood Bowl and especially with um, Lizard Men, they're one in nines. Now I really feel bad that I did that. Two GFIs to base the ball. Now with that, with tackle, it could work. I guess he has to go into the base the Crocs. Yeah, I should I should have definitely blitzed him down. Played safer. Safe moves first. I think maybe I did the right moves to try to win. Maybe, maybe jam toast. Maybe I did the right move to try to win, but maybe I shouldn't have done. Maybe it wasn't the right move to try to win. I think I think I should have played safer. Because I should have played like I was playing pro tips rather than like I was playing the ladder where it was the first game of the team and if I don't win, I just remake the team. Because what's the point in starting with not a win? That's the thing. So I, I did play a little bit like I was playing for a win on the ladder rather than just playing just playing good blood ball yeah but I don't know I was and there was a good chance that I make those two GFIs and then if I do there's a good chance of him having to use his reroll on the dodge but then I just left it open I just left it open I was basically relying on him failing a one in nine which is I hate people doing that so I think it's safe to say I played wrong I should have played safer I should have absolutely played safer but then I guess I had to push for it if I wanted to win myself but um, I don't know. At least it's there. It's there. You can see. You can judge if you're a kind of play for the win person or not. Whether you would have played for the win or whatever. So it's there, isn't it? And it's either right or it's wrong. Whatever. It is what it is. And um, yeah, I think it's okay. All right, I've still got a chance of a draw here anyway. So. Not much of a chance without a reroll.
Oh yeah, I guess that's a good point, Jam Toast. But still, I, I still think it was a low percentage play. Looking at it, the fact he had the reroll. Now you had to make you had to make the handoff too, though I guess. So maybe it wasn't so bad. So I want to have him. Oh, this is really bad. I've got to hand off and pass it and stuff to score. And maybe I'll just do the pack. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough then. Fair. People, people can judge it for themselves. Maybe I make this pass this turn. I think that's what I do, right? If when I'm while I'm not busy dying. Holy shit! Right. So now these can both score. I guess I could put the ball in the hands of. I could pass it to the other hobgoblin, but it'd be a it'd be a four plus pass then. But then I guess I wouldn't need to do the GFIs. It could be a four plus pass, three plus catch. Put him here. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI, GFI. Really, really tough touchdown for him though. But I guess it makes more sense, doesn't it? Right. So let's make one GFI at a time. Make this block here, which potentially frees up two players later because I can do this one dicer at the end. Um, right, so there's a bit of a screen throughout. Oh yeah, he can get in as well. Oh, that's that's pretty nice, isn't it? Him getting in there. Right, because so I've got three potential receivers after I fuck all this up, and uh, let's go for it. Right, four plus pass. One. Five plus... Oh, it's fucking weather! Ah, <gasps> oh, shit. It's very sunny. Minus one to pass. Forgot about it. Oh, man. Yes and no, Flake and Wrath. It all depends on the situation, basically. If if I get the opportunity to carry with a bull, I will. But, um, you know, and only early on. Later on, I'll have... Um, later on, I'll like a dedicated show hands hobgoblin to carry it. Um, but early on, I want to skill up the bulls. So, um, yeah. Ah, so we blitzed him, based him. Now I can do a long bomb though, and it's it's still a six plus. So so the long bomb play is absolutely fine at this point. Yeah, it's all situational. So like. You know, Muldripster was playing Kemri the other day um, earlier, so I was like, I would carry it on the Hobgoblin, so that you're, um... I didn't stand these guys up, so... This is an easy chain him free, and then he just goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I can chain him free. Ugh, it's not that easy, actually. But, um... So I can I can get him free. He can just pass it to him. Yeah, all right. So this guy can go in. Oh, that's a GFI. All these GFIs. So he goes in there. That's not a GFI, is it? All right, good. Oh, I've, I've, I've blocked myself off. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this looks bad. Got to get a power thing. I oh, got the power. 
Right. So now he's he's now free to run through here and score. So if I, if I just hadn't made the pass last turn, um, I could have made it a lot easier, couldn't I? But never mind. So at the moment it's a six plus pass because of the fucking um, sun. So I think I have to make the two GFIs now. Five plus four plus. Not the, not the hardest thing in the world. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> so my, my, my three pass attempts were two ones and twos. I think the pass handoff wasn't worth it to be honest. Mishaps. Not with the not with a minus one with a sun. I think the sun made it too hard. Which is a shame because obviously you would think Chaos Dwarves minus one to passing wouldn't really make any difference to a Chaos Dwarf player. But um there you go. Yeah, they they have, said the coach, they have. I know that. Um I'll show you them later. Ah, oh, his his guy who was injured got the MVP, so that's something good. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah, go to show off that. Yeah, um, more or less. Um, yep. So there you go. So it wasn't well, it wasn't it wasn't the desired result, but I mean it did show off a misplay of mine pushing for that, pushing for pressure on the ball, and it shows why I don't like basing the ball because you know. Even if I had based the ball there, it's just a 3 plus to dodge away. Sure, he might use a reroll, and it's a 3 plus handoff. Sure, he might have to use a reroll. So, but he was still very high percentage to get away and, and then I, you know, run away and make the game easy for himself. So I absolutely should have blitzed the skink that I was thinking about blitzing and played it safe. I absolutely should have played it safe that game. I think, but then maybe I draw and then. So it just depends. If it, going for, I guess my way was the was the best way to. Arguably the best way to go for a win, maybe, maybe the better. Maybe I did make the right play to go for a win, but um, so you know, who knows? Is it? Oh well, there you go, Skrull dude. All right, fair enough. Rookie tips. <laughs> there you go. Um, it it just it all it's all situational, Jake Snake eyes. All situational. Um, it just it it's absolutely. Like most things in Blood Bowl, it's absolutely situational. But there you go. I'm not sure this will go on the YouTubes. Maybe it will because it was a good example of when things don't go well. So if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.